Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I want to show you the min, max, and clamp properties for CSS. And this is kind of a game changer in my opinion on setting any kind of width or font size, anything like that. It's way more responsive and it's shorter to write on top of all that. You'll see here I've just got a basic web page set up and I've got some media queries to basically adjust these font sizes, the paragraph sizes, and then on this image tag, even though I don't have it in a media query, I'm using both a width and a max width to basically make sure that I can have a responsive image on this page. Now, you might be saying, clamp, I haven't heard of this much, and that's because it's fairly new. And in fact, I've heard about it for the last year or two and always just kind of put it off because I didn't think it was quite ready. But now, you know, it's, it's at 92% global usage. And once iOS 15 comes out and people start upgrading their phones and things like that, it's really Safari 13 that slowed things down. That's now nearly at two years out. So sooner than later, that will start taking over more of the market share. And I think this number will go up even more rapidly uh, than it already is. Now, you know your particular needs, so you may need something that has better global usage, but I think it's at least worth checking out. So let's go ahead and talk about how to use the clamp property. We're gonna have min, max, and clamp, and clamp uses both min and max. So let's start with min and max, and then we'll move on to clamp after that. Now you see over here, I've got essentially saying, I want this image to always take up 85%. However, I wanna cap it at 500 pixels, which is the same as saying, I want the smallest option of those two to be taken either 85% or 500 pixels. You can see if I get smaller than 500 pixels, it's now taking up 85%, not the 500 pixels. So whatever is smaller out of those two, and that tells you that you should use the min property. So if I say width here and say min, I can give it two things. I can either pass the pixels first, or I could pass the percentage first. It just doesn't really matter here. But if I save this, this will now have the same effect as these two lines. So it's essentially saying, hey, browser, take whatever one is smaller out of these two, and you can see how quickly uh, that adjusts for you. Now, the same thing is true for max. If I come in here and I say, all right, I want the max available here, either 500 pixels or 85%, whichever one is bigger. Well, as I move down eventually here, this is not going to be super responsive because if I get into smaller screens, um, the max property will actually move beyond the, bond, the bounds of the image itself. So you see here, if I were to zoom in here, this is saying that that's 500 pixels, even though the screen is only 193. So you probably wouldn't use the max on a small screen like this, or it would break your viewport width. Um, but you can see if I get bigger here, it's getting larger and larger, and now it's way above 500 pixels because it's trying to be 85%, which is the larger of the two. So both min and max work like that, and they're pretty easy to understand. You can actually pass it multiple things. So I could say like, I don't know, 10 viewport height or something like that. Um, and it's gonna choose between these three, but I never write things that have three things it's trying to choose between a normal CSS. So I don't know that I would use this anywhere. If you can think of a place, let me know. Uh, maybe I just don't have enough imagination. <laughs> All right, so those are those two. You can also do stuff like this. You could do like uh, 10 viewport width plus, uh, I don't know, 100 pixels, something like that. And it will choose between those two, whichever is bigger. Now this one, 500 pixels, it looks like is bigger out of those two, obviously. So um, just make sure if you do calculations that you have spaces on either side, this will consider all of this one unit and it won't know what to do with it, as you can see. Okay, so that's min and that's max. Let's talk about the game changer, I think, which is clamp. Now clamp can be used anywhere, like a width or a font size or anything like that. Um, but let's go ahead and just look at the MDM docs and it's gonna tell us essentially how it works. Let me pull this up here. So clamp says it's gonna take a min, then it's gonna take a value, that's the preferred value, and then a maximum. And it has to be in that order and there can only be three and there must be three. So unlike min and max where you can add multiples, you can do math, all this kind of stuff. And here, here you have min, val, and max. You can do math in any of them, but you have to have all three and all three in that order. That's gonna show you what this looks like. It's essentially saying, hey, the minimum I ever want it to get is one rem. The preferred is 2.5 U width, and the largest is two rem. And it's always gonna adjust and basically pick whatever works best. And it's showing it here with font size. Come here, the same thing, and here the same thing again. Now, why would this be important? Why couldn't you just do viewport width? Maybe you've even seen somebody do something like that where you say like, I don't know, like 15 viewport width, something like that. I save it and I come over here and that looks okay there and I get smaller and you think, well, that should be fine. Let's get really small here. And oh, let's see, I I should get rid of this and change this back to, back to uh, 
min to make sure that this is responsive. Let me do that here. You get really small here and that might be okay, but then you get bigger and suddenly it is going to be absolutely massive. If I take this off, you see how big that is. So all you'll do is you'll come in here and you'll say clamp and then you're gonna pass it one item. So I'll say like the smallest I'd ever want it to get would be maybe two rem, something like this. And that's what I've got on this H1 here. So let's get rid of this now. And we don't need that media query for the H1 anymore. So I'd say smallest I want it to get is two rem. The preferred is something like, uh, let's say four or three rem, something like that. And the largest I ever want it to get is four rem on the biggest screens available. So I'll get rid of this and let me get rid of this. And you see now it's just going to dynamically shift and change as I move the viewport. And it will never get smaller than two rem. Whenever it can be three rem, it will be. And then four rem on the absolute largest screens available. So it'll clamp eventually at that. Now usually you wouldn't add a rem here. You'd add something like viewport width, like 20 viewport width. I don't know, something like that. But it'll never get larger than four rem. So even as I move out this way, it might get bigger and then it'll eventually clamp at some level at four rem. So this is how you use it for something like font size. Now you can do the same thing um, here on this paragraph tag, but you can also use it for things like padding. So let's say I come up here to my padding. I've got four rem on the body here, but I'll say I want clamp and the smallest I want it to do is two rem. And maybe I'll say something like 10 viewport width and then the largest would be four rem. And I'll go ahead and remove, let's see the padding down here. And now you can see the padding will actually adjust as the viewport width changes. So as it changes, it'll actually get bigger and smaller, but it's never gonna get bigger than four rem and never gonna get smaller than two rem. So this is a really great way to adjust for screen size with simple and easy to understand CSS. Now. I saw a really cool article and I'm just gonna point you this way and kind of show you how I use this. This article, um, this author here, uh, Pedro Rodriguez, explains how it works and then shows you how you can actually dynamically adjust and have this linear font size with CSS clamp. And he gives you a bunch of use case scenarios, including a bunch of edge cases and shows you how you could cover for those and adjust for default uh, for older browsers. Um, but all I'm going to show you here is he's got this little calculator down this way. Um, and he basically says, hey, you put the minimum you want it to be at. So like maybe 350, the maximum screen size where you want it to stop expanding. You put the, the minimum font size. So we'll do like 1.2 rem, maximum font size, maybe like 5 rem, and then what a rem is uh, in your document. And then you can copy this. And I'm just going to put this over this way. All right, now uh, let's get rid of font size. There we go. Um, let's jump back over and you'll see what it'll do is it starts and it's never going to get smaller than 1.2 rem But it's just going to dynamically shift as I get larger and larger and larger and eventually It's going to clamp uh, at this 5 rem which is as big as it will allow it to get and it's doing all this math to figure this out Now you can use his little um, Explanation here and I would encourage you to read through this article He even shows you how you can reflow text so it always cuts off at the same letters the same words um, Which is pretty cool and then gives you a bunch of uh, use cases for um, older browsers, non-reflowing text inside of a container. Um, so it's definitely worth checking out. I went ahead and wrote up a little keyboard Meister script that lets me do this. For this, I'll come in here and just add a clamp and uh, let's say a rem here. And I've got this little script. Let me pull it over this way where I can say the min minimum, it'd be 1.2, maybe maximum would be three. And then it will calculate it all for us according to what he has here. I can do the same thing on pixels. If you're interested in Keyboard Maestro, let me know. I've thought about doing a video before, but I know it's Mac only, and so I don't know, that may um, not be as applicable to you. So let me know if you're interested in that. Right, well, hopefully understanding how this clamp property works uh, will give you some ideas for fonts, for sizing, for padding, for widths of images, all kinds of stuff like this. And you can see how quick and easy it is to get set up. He also in here, one more thing about this article, he does actually show you a function, how you can actually use this and use it live, dependent on the person's REM settings on their actual browser. Um, so it's as responsive as you would want it to be. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, happy coding.